So can cell phones cause cancer? No. California recently put out a statement saying that people should avoid having cell phone use uh, excessively, avoid having cell phones near their head, avoid sleeping near their cell phones. Uh, why? Not that there's any evidence of it, but just that some people are worried that uh, cell phones could potentially cause cancer. Uh, you can be worried about anything, but you can't base your life just on worry. You have to base it on facts. I'm going to show you today how cell phone radiation cannot cause cancer. Right. Why is that? Well, it all has to do with wavelengths. Uh, if you remember from my electromagnetism video, uh, we can always think of uh, radiation as a spectrum uh, with different uh, intensities and frequencies of, of light. I mean, basically all radiation is light. Uh, when you talk about the uh, properties of the type of radiation, you have to talk about its, uh, its wavelength. All right, so we have a wave. I'm not a good artist. All right. So this is the wavelength from here to here. That's the wavelength. The amplitude of that is from here to here. Amplitude. Okay. So this is also commonly called as frequency. And you can think of this as intensity. All right. So the various wavelengths determine the properties of light. So if you uh, know anything about the electromagnetic spectrum, you know, it goes from gamma rays, x-rays, uh, ultraviolet, visible light, infrared, microwaves, you know, then you got like, you know, radio and TV waves over here. All right. Gamma waves, gamma rays have a very, very small wavelength. And they get bigger wavelengths as you go and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay. Now, that's the wavelength. You can also change the intensity. And you can have a highly intense gamma and highly intense x-rays and highly intense ultraviolet and highly intense microwaves and so on. However, the wavelength, you know, it's not perfect because I'm not a great drawer, it's the same. We're not saying that the wavelengths are any further apart here. They're just envisioning, see, here we go. That wavelength and that wavelength are the same. So the intensity can change, but the frequency doesn't change. And since the frequency doesn't change, the type of radiation it is is, is dictated by the frequency. So, uh, you know, you have green light. Oh, I have green light. Not bad. You know, then I have uh, red light, which is a bigger wavelength. And then we have blue light, which is a smaller wavelength. Now, if I make a more intense blue light, guess what? It's still blue. It doesn't turn red. It doesn't turn green. More intense green light is still green. See? All right. Same with the red. Okay, so uh, when you're talking, thinking about light that we think of think of every day, you know, it's uh, blue light has the highest wavelength. And then green is, you know, I'm sorry, the shortest wavelength. Green's a little more spread out. Red more so. Okay, and then of course you have even higher frequencies, which are, you know ultraviolet, they're more violet than violet, and then we have ones that are even more spread out. Let's go down here. Infrared, which are even more spread out than red. Got it, okay. Our photoreceptor cells in our eyes are only sensitive from here to here. They get bombarded by radiation from down here, above here, but the only thing that they're sensitive to is in here. Why? Because the particular frequencies of light that exist here, the particular frequencies of radiation that exist here match this is about the, approximately the size and shape of molecules on the outer part of our cells in our eyes. Those molecules get jostled around and they send up a signal. So you have a, a green molecule, green, green, green. It's, uh, this is not what it looks like. This is the cell membrane, just imagine. It has cell membranes, it has various openings, it has pores in it. Some green wavelengths come in. Uh, the green wavelengths come in and they are just about the size of a molecule. They interact with it, and if enough of that happens, it gets what sends a signal up to the brain. You got red photoreceptor cells, which would have obviously bigger, I'm not going to draw the whole thing, bigger areas, slightly bigger wavelength comes in, it sends a signal up to the cell. You got blue ones, which, you know, smaller, and you got really tiny wavelengths come in. Those all go up to the brain, or brain perceives that as a visual image, it perceives that as color, and it determines all the other colors based on how much of a signal it's getting from each of its three different types of, of photoreceptor cells. Now, when an infrared signal comes in, 
you know, oh, it's so big, it doesn't do anything. It can't, don't forget, ignore the height, but look at the wavelength. It can't do anything to these molecules in the same way the green does. It doesn't do nothing, but it cannot stimulate these little openings or these little cells in the outer part, uh, molecules in the outer part of the cell membrane to send up a signal. Similarly, you got something super intense. You have, you know, it's so intense you can't even see it. Oh, you got an x-ray. It also cannot do the same thing. It doesn't do nothing, but it cannot sit, stimulate this cell to send up a signal. All right. So it's actually quite important to think about visible light because the, the wavelength of the visible light is about the same as the width of molecules on the cell membranes. I know that I've drawn this quite differently, but you know there are biology has a certain range from small to big, and visible light falls within that range. It has approximately the same sh size as those important photoreceptor cell parts, and so therefore it's sensitive to it. Other radiation doesn't do that. Radiation that is Hot, has a longer wavelength, like infrared really does nothing to the cells at all. It's so much bigger that it's just sort of like getting pushed a little bit. Huh. It's getting pushed a little bit. Much, much smaller wavelengths can actually cause huge damage to the cells because they're so much smaller than the molecules that they actually will rip apart the molecules. They'll rip through them. They'll make holes in the molecules. Infrared and bigger cannot make those holes. All right. So what kind of energy... What kind of radiation does your cell phone use? Well, your cell phone uses microwaves. All right, now the microwaves sound a little scary. We got our, you know, everyone's familiar with our home microwave. But you've ever noticed they have unnecessarily complicated buttons now? I just like the ones with time. And now it's got like popcorn, reheating, meat, frozen, dairy. It's just like, give me a time. Anyway, you, know, you got your door, got your little window. You can see your food. Ooh, it's getting hot. Oh, those microwaves, those scary microwaves, they must be irradiating my food. Well, no, that's not what's happening. You got those big wavelength microwaves. They're so big that they can't cause damage to the molecules because the molecules are just, eh, they're so much smaller. They're so much smaller. It's just getting jostled around. But that doesn't mean nothing happens. It's those molecules get jostled around back and forth, back and forth. And this is mostly happening to the water inside our food. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Just like if you rub your hands together, creates heat. So radiation can cause heat in food or in anything, especially as it gets, you know, more and more intense. Now, not the wavelength changing, but the intensity, the height is much higher. Causes much more movement of the molecules. So a lot of intense radiation can cause heating that's how microwaves work all right however no matter how hot you make microwaves they don't turn into ultraviolet they don't turn into x-rays they don't turn into gamma rays x-rays gamma rays ultraviolet light like i said they're so much smaller than the size of a molecule that they go and they puncture it they make holes they rip pieces off that cannot happen with something oh so much bigger it's just doesn't work. It cannot be. So cell phones use microwaves to communicate with the cell phone towers. So if cell phone, if microwaves could cause cancer, that would be very scary. But they can't for what we've just shown. And even if they could, why don't we have hand cancer? You know, why would it be the brain? Why would it be the brain? First of all, even if it were something about the head, the brain's just not sitting here. The brain is surrounded by, you know, there's skin, bone, dura matter, water, fluid. Then you got the brain, brain. How would the cell phone radiation penetrate all of this, get to the brain, but not cause skin cancer, not cause bone cancer? Where else do we have our cell phones all the time? In our pants. You know, why don't we have thigh cancer? Why don't we have other cancers? That's where our phones are most of the time. So they can't cause cancer, but even if they did, they wouldn't cause cancer just in the brain. It makes no sense. The intensity of the microwaves are very, very light. They're so much lighter. They're so weak that any damage that they could potentially cause would be stopped by the skin and the bones and the cerebral spinal fluid. If somehow those things could cause cancer, that's where the cancer would be. How would they bypass all of that and go into the brain? Right. So... And even if there was any risk of cancer from cell phones, which there isn't, think about this for just one second. Your cell phone produces what? About one watt of power, which is, remember, radiating in every single solitary direction. 
So a little bit of that one watt, there's your ear, goes into, will, will go into your skull, it does, will jostle some of the molecules around and create a small, imperceptible amount of heat. If that heating somehow caused cancer, which doesn't, then the risk would again be in your skin, your ear, all of that, not your brain. The sun, remember, this, the light from the sun, not only is it a much higher, much, sorry, yeah, much higher frequency and much smaller wavelength, it's also vastly more intense. In fact, it's 240,000, let me write that again, 240,000 times as intense. And this is just the visible light. I'm not talking about, remember, the sun also does send some of that dangerous infrared. That infrared is enough to cause, is strong enough and small enough to cause cancer. It also is sending ultraviolet, it also is sending infrared. Oh, that's ultraviolet. That's infrared. That's visible light. All of that. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of times. You go out into, you, the, 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 going from your house into your car is going to give you far more radiation than you're going to get in a lifetime of cell phone use. 240,000, if you used your cell phone for one minute, you'd have to use, you, you, it's, a, it's one 240,000th of the light that you get from your cell phone. No, oh, God, let's start this part over. All right, so going from your house to your car. Okay, so going from your house to your car. And putting your cell phone in your pocket or being worried about your cell phone. And you have a son producing 240,000 times the radiation is stupid. Stupid. 240,000 times. All right, so say you use, let's say you were out in the sun for one minute. That would equal to 240,000 minutes of cell phone use. So if you remember from the, you know, play and movie Rent, there are what, 525,600 minutes in a year. So using, going outside for one minute is like being on your phone for six months straight. And that's each and every time you're out in the sun for one minute. The sun is actually dangerous. And this is just, the, like I said, this is just the visible light. Then it also does have actual dangerous ultraviolet that actually can cause problems. But ultraviolet light, guess what? Ultraviolet doesn't somehow beam itself into your skull. No, it causes skin cancer. So if cell phones did anything, it would be skin cancer. And they don't. They can't. They can't cause any cancer. And if they did, it would be skin cancer. Just like the sun doesn't just bypass through our skin and cause cancer to be inside of us, the skin does what it's supposed to do. It blocks, it absorbs all the light. That's why we have melanin in our skin, so that the dangerous ultraviolet light bombarding our skin is absorbed by the melanin to, pr to, to protect other damage to other parts of the skin. And if you go and excessively sun yourself, guess what? Eventually, the damage accumulates and you can get skin cancer. You can get melanoma. So don't be worried about your cell phone. Don't even be worried about the sun. Just go out, be rational. If you're going to bake in the sun for hours and hours and hours, then use some sunscreen. If you're going outside for five minutes to go to your car, that's just part of life. Live your life. Don't be worried about stupid things like the possibility that the microscopic amounts of non-dangerous radiation coming out of cell phones somehow causes cancer, but not being concerned whatsoever about the sun. All right, just be smart. All right, thanks. Sorry if I got a little heated on this one, but I just don't like irrational fear-mongering among the people. There's plenty of dangerous things out there. Let's be concerned about those and not things like, you know, oh, I might get... If I use a cell phone nonstop for an entire year, I'll get two days worth, I'll get two minutes worth of sun exposure. Really? Come on. All right. So that's it. If you like this video, please remember to like. Wait, like is down there. Subscribe over there and watch some of our other videos and playlists over there. That would be a great help. So thank you so much for watching. All right. Have a good day. Until next time.